Um, one of the other issues we talked about got voted down was the student athlete, uh, potential student athlete for Division Three, having essentially a tryout, for lack of a better description, basically run through uh, with coaches to test their skills, see what they're like, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, by the way, we should mention the football one was the only one that the SAC uh, was for and got voted against. SAC, as you pointed out, was against the idea of this, and were and uh, the the majority voted in that favor as well. I point that out because SAC basically was in the majority on all but one vote, um, which I thought was interesting. They were listening to the student athletes. But on this issue, <clears throat> you told me back in September this one would be tough. Mm -hmm. Getting this one through was going to be difficult That because this isn't the Division Three model. And we seem to see that because this one wasn't close. Uh, the on-campus evaluation uh, proposal, I think... A lot of folks felt that it was just fundamentally inconsistent with the D3 philosophy. Um, I'm sympathetic to the plight of coaches in anything that can help them to basically, you know, better uh, allocate their precious time and, and the many responsibilities they have. Um, but I think ultimately a lot of folks felt like it was too far removed from the D3 philosophy to be conducting an evaluation of the athletic abilities of prospective student athletes on campus. Um, and to some folks, not necessary since there are so many uh, club teams and showcases now where um, coaches can, can uh, appreciate uh, the athletic ability of, of prospects that it seemed a step in the wrong direction and it seemed like it was unnecessary to, to a lot of folks. That, you know, that being said, I, I really understood the rationale behind the proposal and felt like it was a it was a, a brave move for the president's council to sponsor it simply for a vote. They didn't endorse it. They didn't oppose it. But they said, we spent enough time talking about this. And this issue is significant enough that we ought to give the membership a vote, especially since about 60, 65 percent of our members last year at the convention in a straw vote said they'd like to see it in, in, in legislative form. Um, a lot of other recruitment things went through. For example, instead of waiting till the first day of the senior year for on-site visits, it's now January 1 of the junior year. I thought it was a good argument made that juniors are starting to look at colleges anyway. We might as well let the coaches see them. Uh, now you can also talk to a student athlete once they're done with their sophomore year of high school instead of waiting until they're done with their junior year. Those two seem to go hand in hand. The letter of intent now is in place, though I think there's still some gray area as to how that would necessarily be executed, but that is there in place for people to check out uh, and be able to sign and stuff. It seemed like there were enough, uh, a lot of recruiting things that went through that yeah. would benefit coaches, but at the same time, kind of goes lock and step into modern times. I know I was looking at colleges back in the 90s my, in my junior year. It seems like this kind of now kind of catches up to that, that, that style. This isn't a senior-only system anymore. I, I would agree with that 100%. I've got um, two high school seniors at home right now and I can tell you uh, they, they started looking at schools uh, in their sophomore year um, I do think um, folks there's more information available earlier now whether it be um, on institutional websites um, and uh, folks taking more visits um, for student athletes um, the, the club uh, program um, uh, model that has grown to uh, basically as an addition to, if not in some cases to supplant the scholastic model, it just means that uh, uh, the recruiting process is beginning at an earlier and earlier age. It, it, that's not a trend that I'm necessarily in love with, but when you remember the challenge that our institutions have uh, in terms of enrollment management and the role that athletics is playing in that regard and the fact that at the typical D3 school, at least 20% of the students are student athletes, the idea of trying to get D3 uh, front and center in the minds of prospective students and prospective student athletes um, earlier in that process I think makes a lot of sense because the process is beginning earlier um, so you might as well be uh, you might as well be out there um, uh, trying to convey uh, the good information that, that, that D3 represents uh, earlier as well. 
the other one that I was interested in because the conversations made me think that it wouldn't pass was the con uh, was the one regarding being able to talk to a student athlete on site at a location that might have a multiple day event. So if yep. you're there on Friday and it runs through Sunday, the old rules were you had to wait until Sunday to talk to that student athlete. And you may not even be there. If you're there Friday and they walk up to you, you can't talk to them. Right. When they first were talking about this and they were talking about the amendment, um, it didn't sound good. The amendment was about a 200 vote swing. Uh, it then got to a vote and it passed easily with only 28 people voting against it. Yeah. That was an interesting moment because it, it literally sounded like there may be people against it, but the vast majority of people were thought that was an, uh, a no-brainer of a decision. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the practical effects of that proposal are, it's just very positive. Um, the idea that uh, for a multi-day event, and so many of these uh, these uh, showcases uh, and tournaments are now multi-day events, the idea that the only time you would be able to touch base with a prospect is after the last contest on the last day um, just doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense, not only from from the coach's standpoint, but from the prospect standpoint too. The original proposal, which would have said, hey, any time uh, during that day, as long as, you, as you've been released, that struck many, including SAC, by the way, as, as being too permissive. And, and SAC, this is another proposal where I think the SAC viewpoint was very influential um, in the SAC viewpoint one out, which was at the end of each day is fine, but during the particular day may present too many conflicts. Um, we'd rather not have to manage or, or, or deal with with, uh, as prospective student athletes uh, with with our coaches, um, but but again, I think this is still a significant uh, step forward in that now you're empowering coaches to be able to contact prospects at the end of that particular day, um, and then they can go on to another event rather than having to wait till the last day of that contest of of, of that showcase. 